Isaiah, the 55th chapter, the sixth verse, one verse. And this is a verse and a chapter that we've read and heard many times. But God truly placed it on my heart this week. And I believe that this message comes in the form of instruction. It comes in the form of his great love for us. <coughs> Maybe it comes in the form of a warning. I like to call it a love warning. Yeah. Is there such a thing? Yeah. There is now. <laughs> it's a love warning from God. Amen. And I look at it, this verse, as a form of an in, in the form of an invitation. This verse was spoken back 2,000 years ago by the prophet. But there's no doubt in my mind that this verse tonight is for you and for me. Amen? And curiously, it goes along with the preaching in the last few weeks. The schemes of the enemy. Buy the truth. Never sell it. And it goes along with Brother Mike's testimony last Sunday morning. And he spoke about the absolute value of our relationship. And how maybe we forget sometimes. And how sometimes we might take it for granted. But that it has amazing value. Can you think of a better thing that you have here on this earth than our relationship with Jesus Christ it doesn't get any better than that and it's an honor and a privilege to have this kind of a relationship and I love how the Holy Spirit confirms week after week and how he ties things together does he do that or is it just a coincidence I believe he does it. In fact, I know he does it. Thank you, Lord. And the verse says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he may be near. 55th chapter, the 6th verse. I'm going to read it again. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Ooh. When you talk about the word seek, when you use the word seek, many times it has to do with finding something good. Finding a treasure. I'm seeking for that treasure. You see documentaries that show men, women seeking for this great treasure. They may have a map or they may have a clue to where it might be and they spend lots of money and they seek for it. And it says, seek, look hard, seek after the Lord. What? While he may be found. Interesting words that are used here. The word has great implications that we must seek him and we must seek him now. And we must seek him, and we must seek him when he might be found. Amen. It implies that that's not going to always be available. What? I don't like to think that, brother. <coughs> it's now. It's not when your thoughts are it's not in your timing. It's now. What are you talking about, brother? I'm talking about right this second. Seek after the Lord. Well, we're here, aren't we? Yes, you are. Do you stop seeking once you st start, once you come to church, are you okay? Once you receive the Holy Spirit, are you okay? No, we've said this many times. It's only the beginning. Praise God. 
I love that. It's only the beginning. What else, Lord, do you have for me? I want to seek for everything that you have. Amen? We must seek for the Lord right now. And we must call on him when he is near. Think about this. When there's a gift out there that's for you, you want to get into it, you want to look at it, you want to see what somebody got you. Don't we have that way about us? What about God? You see, God speaks of the great gifts that he has for you and for me. Don't you want to get into them now? Why do you want to wait? What's the advantage of saying, I'll just wait on that? Because his gifts are way greater than any gift we can receive here. Amen? Amen. We know that in the new covenant, Jesus has come. And there is great grace. And there is great love. And there is great mercy. Amen? And there's great forgiveness. And I'm so thankful. I'm not sure how I would handle it if I didn't have Jesus to forgive me. I don't know what I would do. I don't think I could get through this life. But the new covenant says this. But it also says, don't trample on God's grace. What does that mean? His grace, his mercy, his forgiveness. Don't take his grace for granted. This verse is so important to us. This verse is saying, this is an abundant life that he's inviting us to. You see, it's another invitation to us. Don't you love God's invitations? He never forces you to do anything. The Holy Spirit never forces you to do anything. It's so important to live that abundant life. And I want to live that abundant life. In Romans 6, 1 and 2, you don't have to turn there. It's, it talks about God's grace and his mercies. And Paul speaking and says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You see, you can't take his grace for granted. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? His grace does not free us to continue to sin. It's not a free pass. Well, I'll go ahead and sin some, and I'll ask for forgiveness. I'll go to confession. Confession here is not through a man. Confession is to God. Amen. And he's great. And he has great grace and he's got grace mercy. But don't tread on it. Be careful not to abuse it. Don't forsake the things. He's asking us to forsake the things that he's given us. He's not. He's saying, don't forsake them. He's given us great things. He's asking us to forsake our evil ways, to forsake sin, to forsake evil thoughts and lusts that come to our mind. Praise God. We're to forsake the things that offend God. Do we offend God in any way? We're not to do that. Matthew 6 and 33 says, and this shows a confirmation some people say, well, that verse you're reading in Isaiah is Old Testament. And it's okay. Thank you, Lord. I believe that the New Testament, the New Covenant, confirms everything that the Old Testament says. Amen? Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
and he'll supply all your needs. What does he say? Seek ye first. Isaiah says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That means seek him first. Those two verses go exactly together. Amen? Amen. Seek him first. Make God a priority in your life. Seek him first. Seek him while he may be found. Seek him when he is near. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. I love the verse in Isaiah that we've read because it brings to my mind a sense of urgency. <clears throat> Brother Steve, don't get too excited. It can wait, can it? Can it wait? The word of God here says, seek ye first before anything else. The word of God says, seek ye the Lord while he might be found. Praise God. God did not intend for us to live a sinful life, a worldly life. Well, here's my plan. Well, that's the first mistake you just made by saying that. Here's my plan. Let's see. I plan on sowing my wild oats. And if y'all don't know what that means, that means just having fun in this world and doing all the sinful things. Sowing my wild oats. And then, I don't know, about 40, age 40, maybe 50, I'll start serving the Lord. We've seen it happen. We've seen it happen where individuals took the Lord and took him for granted and didn't serve them when they were young. Maybe they went to Sunday school. Maybe they did this in the church and did that. But in their minds, they said, I'm going to enjoy this life while I can. And when I turn a certain age, well, guess what? You might not turn that age. Here's the question for you. Who owns your tomorrows? We preached on that many weeks ago. Who owns your tomorrows? God does. But Brother Steve, I can do this and I can do that and I'm in control of my thing. Well, guess what? That can change. Amen. Verse 8 says, in that same chapter of Isaiah, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. It's not just words. What's his timing for us? What's his will for us? Brother Steve, he's the God of love. He's the God of second chances. He's not planned a life for us, young people listen, of those disobedience, <clears throat> of arrogance, of assuming that God will always be there just like a genie in a bottle. He may not be there. That's what this tells us. Praise God. God has a plan for each and every one of us. What is it? Search him out. Know his plan for us. Well, brother, you're 68 years old. What much more of a plan can you have? For the rest of my life, tomorrow, or 20 years from now, I don't know. But he has a plan for me. And he customized that plan specifically for me. Thank you, Lord. Isn't the Lord good? Praise God. Don't take him for granted. 
Follow his plan. Know his plan. It's not your timing. Seek him while he may be found. Tomorrow might not come. Tomorrow may bring unexpected things into your life that may not allow you to seek him. We don't know our tomorrows. There could be great troubles ahead that won't allow us to do what our thoughts were to do. Well, I'll wait till this time. I can say this. Don't wait. I believe the call of this message is for now. Amen? James 4 and 8 says, Draw to God, and he will draw to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And the seventh verse says, Submit yourselves to God. Don't wait. Resist the devil, and he will flee. It doesn't talk about submitting yourself to God in three years or so. There's no option. It's not like a lease where it's got a certain time attached to it. Say now. Now's the time. <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I like the New Testament better than the Old Testament. Good. That's great. It's a little more liberal. Is that the way you look at it? It allows me to do the things I want to do and then come back to Jesus and say, I'm so sorry I did that, Jesus. And then I can go out and do them again and say, I'm sorry, Jesus. And again, he has great forgiveness for us. And I, how, how many times will he forgive you? I don't know. But don't trample on that. He doesn't want you to live that life. He wants you to live the abundant life. Well, what's the abundant life? A life in Christ. Amen? It's a life in Christ. Without a doubt. Amen. Submit, commit to him a life of Christ. That's what he desires. Yes. That relationship that Brother Mike talked about. That comes from us wanting to live and having a great hunger for him. And the one to live an abundant life for him. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We get enticed by Satan, as the brother preached on a couple weeks ago. But Proverbs 1.10 says, My son, if sinners, if Satan entice thee, consent thou not. Know his schemes. Know that he's right around the corner. Know he's showing you those pictures. Know you, he's showing you those movies. Know and you, he's showing you those things that you shouldn't be a part of. It was kind of a hard message, brother. It's a love warning. And thank you, Lord, that you care so much about us. That you love us so much that you would warn us and you would caution us. Thank you, Jesus. Because he doesn't want to see one of us lost. Praise God. Personal, close, intimate relationship with him. Brothers and sisters, and young people especially, there's no better life than a life with Christ. We have many testimonies in this place. Men and women that maybe didn't serve the Lord the way they should have in their younger years. I could probably throw myself into that group. But they were away from the church also. And I bet if you asked them right now, today, what would they choose? they choose Christ. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Brother Vince, if I asked you, you gave a wonderful testimony tonight. If I asked you, what would you say? I choose Christ. 
I can tell you, I wasted too much time. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm a 12-year-old, or I'm a 13, or I'm a 15 or 16-year-old, and brother, I got lots of time. Do you ever think that in your mind? Anybody? I did. Anybody else? Thank you. If I could do this, I'd be so happy, Lord. I remember we grew up on Odell, right across from Sublet Park in a little bitty tiny house. And it seemed like the whole church lived on Odell. <laughs> But I had friends, friends that were of a different faith in the neighborhood. And we'd play ball together and we'd do all this stuff together. That what kids did. But they did stuff that I wanted to do. And I think to myself, if I could only do that. And it wasn't horrible, it wasn't stealing or anything like that. But it was something I wanted to do because all the other kids got to do it. Why can't you go? Oh, I don't feel like it. I ran out of excuses to make. Oh, I can't today. I got to do this. Or I got to clean up the yard. Or I got to do this. There's only so many excuses you can make. But I, deep down, I wanted to do them. Thank the Lord. He baptized me at 11. There was a reason. He baptized me early because he knew that I would have that struggle. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me each time and convicted my heart. That's not for you. Amen. It's not for you to do. Praise God. Yeah. From the day we're born, from the day we're born, God desires. Before that, God desires a great relationship with each one of us. Amen? Oh, I love that. Not to live however we desire and then turn to him later. That's not the way it works. You can't start serving him and seeking after him too early in your life. The Lord says many times throughout his word, seek me early. Seek me as soon as you can. We see many verses that talk about this. A sense of urgency in this very dark an ugly world. You see, I'm not going to go into the details of this dark and ugly world. You all see it every day. You see it firsthand. You see it on the news. We don't need to repeat it, but I'll tell you this. It's dark and ugly. But I know what Jesus, Jesus shines a light that's much brighter than that dark and ugly. Amen? We have a Jesus, and if you look to him, you don't have to look at that dark and ugly. You pray for it, but you don't have to be involved with it. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. In Hebrews 3, 7 and 8, it says, and this is the Holy Spirit speaking, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, Today, 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 if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Do not allow your heart to be grow cold and hard and insensitive. If we ignore God, if we ignore the Holy Spirit, if we don't listen to him, our heart grows increasingly hard and to a point where we can't even know that it's happening to us. I'm so grateful that that happens because he's trying to show us. He's trying to teach us. Be careful. We need the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And if we begin seeking pleasures and sin that's out of God's will, our heart can be hardened after a while. Lord, Keep speaking to us, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit keep convicting us, Lord. 
Let us keep coming to church and worshiping and praising him. Let his name be on our lips. Praise God. Why such a word tonight, brother? I don't know. All I know is God is speaking. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It has nothing to do with this brother. Be careful. Seek him today. <clears throat> Don't live the life that you desire. Live a life of Christ. Live that abundant life. Well, you know, here's what I was thinking. Let's negotiate this. A little of God, a little of the world. But I'm not going to forget God. I'm not going to leave him out. A little of God, a little of this world. We've seen it happen before. Maybe it's been in our lives. It doesn't work that way. Amen. What are we waiting for? The great invitation. The subtitle of verse, or excuse me, chapter 55 says, The Great Invitation. He's making a great invitation to us tonight. Through this Old Testament verse and all the verses that go along with it and the New Testament, the New Covenant, he's making a great invitation to us. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Don't assume he's going to be there. Be careful. Be cautious. Don't wait. Don't waste time. Proverbs 8 and 17 says, I love them that love me. And those that seek, listen, and those that seek me early shall find me. Young people, seek him now. Middle-aged, seek him now. Older folks, seek him now. This is for everybody. Praise God. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Simple words, but profound. Seek me early. Hunger and thirst after him. Praise God. Draw near to God. We don't want to live this life without him. Seek him early. <clears throat> And seek him in the fullness. Everything that God has for you, everything that God has for you, pray for it. Because God wants to give it to you. Amen? Amen. Every gift God wants to give to you and me. Praise God. Seek him while he may be found. Seek him while he is near. Taste and see. I love that verse. I, I preached on that several months ago. Taste and see. Yes, Lord. And that song came to me. The longer I serve him, what happens? The sweeter he grows. The sweeter he grows. Think about your own life. Most of us are a little bit older in here tonight. When we were kids, till now, he's gotten sweeter every day. In our desire to serve him, grow stronger every day. Seek him early. Seek him early. Taste and see. Psalm 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I love that verse. Blessed is, is the man that trusts in him. Seek the Lord early. Seek his face. Seek him with all you got. Be filled with his spirit. You'll never be the same. Thank you, Lord. I don't want to be the same. I want to be like you, Jesus. Praise God. Are you excited about what he's saying tonight? Thank you, Lord. Taste and see. It's like a good steak. You take a bite of it. Man, that's great. I love that. Or a good pasta. Oh, man, that's the best I've ever had. Taste and see.
Serve the Lord. Taste of the Lord. He is good. He is great. And he's greatly to be praised. And there's nothing like it. And once you have a little Jesus, you want more. And you want more. And your life continues to grow. And I want more. And I want to draw closer. And I want to get away from those things that are tearing me back. Or taking me back. Or tearing me down. Praise God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Seek the Lord early. Know and receive him and everything about him now. As soon as you possibly can. We want to see the gifts of the Spirit alive in this place. Amen? Amen. He has those for us. Are you praying for him? I need to pray for him. Do you think he wants to hold them back? Does he, do you think he wants them to be restrictive? I don't think so. I, want, I think he wants us to have everything that he has for us. Praise God. Don't wait. There's absolute tremendous value in seeking him now. And there's no value in this world in waiting. You'll lose out. God is good. I love these, this verse. I'm going to read it one more time and I'm going to close. Sisters, would you come forward? Seek ye the Lord. Take this home with you. Memorize these verses. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. May the name of the Lord be praised.